wonderful good afternoon from Basel World 2018. It's Tuesday today, the last day. I held back some of the highlights for you. I'm Alexander Linz, head of content of watchadvisor.com, largest search engine for wristwatches and official retailers on the net. And with me, Matthias Breschan, the CEO of Rado, a very warm welcome. Thank you very much, Alexander. Good to see you again. I'm happy to see an Austrian fellow here. <laughs> <laughs> the Austrians take over almost every now and then. Um, you are so kind to show me something you didn't show to the press, really. And I'm very pleased about that. Uh, you took out a watch that was more or less hidden from the press a little bit because you are only going to launch it end of the year. It's going to be launched at uh, the end of this year and we didn't show it because we have uh, already uh, another vintage piece that we are presenting here in Basel, so we kept it actually for the second half of the year. So we're going to talk about um, a watch called Captain Cook, originally designed in 1962. Yes, and of course I think uh, vintage watches, uh, they are now in general a big trend. Uh, you saw many of them in Basel here and I think it's very good for the Swiss watch industry in general because uh, knowing that the watches uh, that were extremely popular 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago still are uh, very trendy and popular 50 or 60 years later, it's, I think, a strong message. Uh, yeah. And I think in particular for Rado, more than uh, for many of the other brands, is because uh, we make watches uh, that are uh, today made of special materials. Uh, and we always try to take the vintage pieces uh, and find also a very contemporary interpretation of it that you are currently having in your hands. Uh, uh, and that is really made with state-of-the-art technology, in this case hardened uh, titanium. Uh, and it really is, uh, uh, to, to, I would say, to, to summon the message uh, that uh, those pieces are made of materials that keep all the beauty from the first day, even after many years, uh, thanks to the uh, ceramic material, or in this case, uh, the hardened titanium. So this was the original piece done in 1962. That's already a replica, but it looks so authentic that I almost thought it is the original one. <laughs> and this is the modern interpretation of it. Um, very cool, I must admit, very cool. And uh, I am very honored, I feel very honored that I have the opportunity to show these pieces to a bigger audience. I hope so, yes. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> very pleased. Fantastic timepieces. Um, digging in, uh, if you go into your history, um, what's the reaction of a typical Rado buyer who in the last decades only saw very uh, design-oriented watches? Are they, they must be simply stunning when they see such watches. The typical Rado buyer, when you, when you imagine he sees this watch being used to buy a rectangular watch, well, actually, we thought this uh, for uh, quite some time. We were we, we thought that this clientele, the very loyal Rado customer, only would buy from us uh, black shiny square watches. Huh? Uh, but uh, since we brought new technologies, and yeah. I would say maybe in particular two technologies, the monoblock construction and uh, uh, the way that we are now able to do a large palette of uh, ceramic colors, uh, yeah. uh, allowed us to really make geometries uh, that are not only square, black and shiny, but we are able to bring styles back that Rado used to have already, like for example this watch uh, that is actually a shape that uh, dates back from the 70s, uh, but with the mean of, for example, the monoblock construction, we are now able to make uh, those watches uh, in ceramic, uh, in a geometry that we were unable to do uh, 10 years back. Uh, yeah. And now these customers uh, actually buy very heavily into these new styles because uh, we have a very broad now new portfolio of products. Huh? You, were, you were already talking about colors. Um, can you quickly explain us the difficulties of making colors in ceramic? Uh, I know it's a nightmare when you get off black. <laughs> it's, it's really becoming yes. a nightmare and to standardize the process. So um, I would say uh, relatively, relatively simple is black ceramic, white ceramic, and then it, gets, it starts to get complicated. Now we have a very special process to make this plasma ceramic. Huh? That, uh, this is the color that is a platinum color yeah. that we have now already on the market since more than 15 years. Uh, Looks a little bit like steel, titanium, yes. it's a mixture of. Exactly. Doesn't yes. look like ceramic. It's, I would say it looks like a very warm steel. It yeah. has a different look from steel, but in a very warm color. But it's right, yeah, it's a platinum color. Yeah. And then we started in 2005 to really bring colors uh, to the ceramic uh, uh, watch market. Uh, we started with some, I would say, very vibrant, uh, colors. vibrant colors, yes. like rose, You were the first to pink. do that. 
And but you uh, were the first to do that, I think. That, that we were the first by yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. exactly, yes, and, or light blue. Yeah, I remember. Um, however, now we are uh, actually uh, having a theme uh, this year that is uh, very much linked uh, to nature. So we actually represent uh, the Rado True Thinline collection, which is this super slim yeah, watch yeah, yeah. that is 4.9 millimeter thin uh, in the colors uh, of the five elements. Uh, so we have uh, the emerald green, the, the deep blue, uh, we have a uh, brown, chocolate brown ceramic, uh, and with the dial, also with a new technology, because we apply on the back of the uh, Mother of Pearl dial a painting in the color and a pattern that actually gives the whole dial a very, uh, like a 3D dimension. But the difficulty to make these uh, colors uh, is actually because we are using them not only for the watch uh, case, but also for the bracelet. And the difficulty is that, of course, all the links that you have in the bracelet, they don't come from the same production load. And the huge difficulty is in ceramic colors to have stable production loads yeah. that really have exactly the same shade in the colors. And when you do assemble links and links coming from different production loads, you see the, the, the smallest change you would uh, see. So this is the big, big difficulty. And this is maybe why still today there are very, very few that master this technology and bring out uh, ceramic uh, colors in, uh, for the bracelets. Yeah, yeah I imagine, I imagine. Um, talking about, you, you forgot to mention, I think, the fire. There's also fire in that collection. Yes, and on the you, fire... You, you, you named all the, all the elements, <laughs> water, earth, yes. uh, but you, you, you missed it. And I like the fire so much. It was... Uh, it's true, yeah. It's, uh, so the, the, the color is also uh, a brown, chocolate brown ceramic, but the dial is made uh, of uh, galvanic growth. Uh, yeah. So mm. it's actually... Uh, uh, a technology that we developed uh, together with uh, with an American designer called Samuel Amoya because he's very much specialized in furnitures and doing special treatments on yeah. furnitures. Uh, and his original idea was actually to, to make a dial with diamond powder. The problem is if we would have made this dial with diamond powder, it probably would <laughs> cost <laughs> yeah. 40,000 uh, US dollars. Uh, now with this galvanic growth technology, we are able to reproduce visually exactly the same effect as diamond powder, but with the result that we are able to retail it uh, for 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this collection is unisex, I think. I, I, yes. I saw it and I think both can wear it, men and, and women. It's not dedicated to either women or men. Or no, not at all, uh, because I think the, the, the really the, I would say the big advantage of this collection is that it's uh, super slim. It really feels like a second skin and it has all uh, the, the beauty and the nice, uh, comfortable aspects of ceramics. So it's yeah. hypoallergenic. Uh, the material adapts to the material of your skin. Uh, it's super light, uh, so it's super comfortable to yeah. be worn on the wrist. Uh, and I think for somebody that is used to have a uh, ceramic on the wrist, uh, it's very difficult actually to change. I, Im I imagine, yeah. Can you just uh, tell me in brief uh, your major markets? Uh, l some years ago were small, in sense of you had your Rado community that was really going for it, and it was either you liked Rado or you didn't like it. Today, Rado is much more open. It's, it's, uh, you have comfortable designs, you have all kind of watches, surfaces, looks. How big is that community today and which are your strongest countries and your voice, the, the Rado community, really going into it? Is it still Europe? Uh, well, first of all, uh, we are still, our number one market uh, is China, but uh, we are very strong uh, in Europe, Middle East, India. This is a huge market for Rado as well because uh, India, for example, is a market where gifting is very important. And mm -hmm. of course, when you gift, uh, in particular for weddings or the person that you love, uh, uh, you, you make a gift, uh, then of course, having a material that keeps all its beauty from the first day, even mm -hmm. after many years, is a very strong emotional message. Uh, mm -hmm. But Rado now, with this collection, I think in the past uh, uh, three years, uh, our clientele is between 10 and 15 years younger than mm -hmm. it used to be. So we were really able with this new uh, portfolio of products uh, to address uh, a new clientele. In addition to our, I would say, very loyal traditional customers uh, that still buy into Rado because for them uh, they yeah. just don't uh, want anything else. Uh, yeah. So we were now able to really transmit this very emotional a message of uh, noble materials also to the young generation. Yeah. 
you corrected me because I wanted to say, is it still China and is Europe coming stronger now? Because I knew, of course, China was your market, but now Europe is really coming stronger with uh, the, the, uh, loving the new designs of, of, of Rado since you have... Exactly, yes. Yeah. I think we saw now a few years where uh, very classic uh, watches uh, were dominating uh, in the market, but now I think also maybe also because the whole economic situation, uh, the positivism is again back. Uh, so I think people now start to be more courageous uh, for trying out things that are a bit more odd, the bigger size watches. Uh, so it's getting, uh, I would say, more fun in the watch market. Yeah. I bring them back to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I love them so much. So this is a real, most, you know, it's not a world premiere, but almost a world premiere. Uh, it's almost a world premiere. Almost <laughs> a world premiere. Once again, the two pieces that have not really been shown to the press so much, this uh, Basel Fair, Captain Cook, Diver. Exactly, that's 300 meter. 300 meter, this was the original piece from 1962. And this is the men's edition, or even could be a woman. Wearing it if... There are a lot of go. women that buy men watches, huh? yeah, because yeah. Uh, for them it's a, it rests, uh, it stays a, a strong character watch and that I think says a lot about her. Huh? Can you name me the price of this stunning watch? I, I'm falling in love with it. 2,500 Swiss francs. So it's uh, extremely affordable because the case is made out of hardened titanium. 2,500 yes. Swiss francs. Oof. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what shall I say? Look, guys, please look. A stunner. Honestly, I'm falling in love with the watch while we are doing the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it the first time. I've never seen that watch before. I'm not cheating. So Matthias just took, just took it out of the box before the interview and I'm falling in love with it. It's a stunner. And actually I took it out because uh, I just wanted to show it to you. Uh, it was not planned to be shown on the interview, but then you convinced me we should show it because you like it so much. Yeah, it's fantastic. No, it really. Um, we'll come to the markets end of the year. Yes, uh, we okay. are going to ship it out in October. Did you show it to your retailers a little bit? Yes, we showed what it. What was uh, the reaction? Uh, well, it was amazing. Yeah, I, I can I, imagine. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm not sure if we... Uh, uh, we'll be able to really ship uh, yeah, all the demand, but yeah. it was really... Uh, uh, quality, uh, uh, design, price is... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Swatch Group. Yeah, that's what Swatch Group is. Thank you very much, yeah, Alexander. That's yeah. Very fair, good offers. I told you a couple of times during that last days, Swatch Group is really mastering quality, design, emotions, and quality, uh, value, for qu uh, value for money couldn't be better. <laughs> that's the next proof here. Fantastic. Uh, Matthias, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alexander. And, it was a uh, pleasure to have you. I know that also for you, Basel is uh, coming to an end. I think yes. in general we uh, were talking about it uh, a bit earlier, so I think it was super positive uh, for I all can, of us. Uh, I can uh, agree. I, I have to agree. I get a lot of positive feedback, yes. And also for uh, all the customers uh, that I uh, met uh, during the last fair, and it's a lot huh, because they really come from all uh, the different countries. Uh, I, I, I think the the, the big change in the economy also that we saw that started in August last year is confirmed and we also have uh, excellent results now in the first uh, two months uh, of this year and I think with the optimism that I saw here in Basel with all the retailers we really uh, I think should be yeah. uh, having yeah. a very good year 2018. Let's knock on wood. Yeah? Exactly. Yeah, let's knock on wood. That it, there is nothing happening. Thank, thank you, you very much, Alexander. Thank you very much. My Austrian Airlines flight is <laughs> waiting for me to bring me home to Vienna tonight. <laughs> I have enough of Basel for another year. If there's but not a Betriebsversammlung, no? Yeah, that's true. They are, they are striking. Hey, guys, I hope not this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Thanks thank very you. much. Thanks for watching. If you like our videos, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and, of course, to like the videos you see. Bye, guys.